A lot has been made about the different symptoms and effects of the variants of COVID-19. For instance, loss of taste and smell, pretty common with the original variant, something we've all heard about, but not necessarily found with the most recent Omicron variant. So today, we are exploring the impact of the different symptoms of COVID-19 that might not be as well known. And Dr. Shika Jane with UIC Health joining us now to talk about this once again. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, Sylvia. Okay, I'm glad we're talking about this because these are a lot of things that we don't hear about. So the latest one is that Omicron could be resulting in hair loss. What do we know about this? So hair loss is something that we often see in people who have um, very stressful times in their life or have a very significant illness and COVID-19 is no different. We're seeing about 20% of people who develop severe COVID-19 and then also people who develop just mild COVID-19 symptoms can actually develop hair loss. And I wanna emphasize this isn't permanent hair loss. In many cases, this is short term. It can last for several months, but ideally once you've recovered from your symptoms, if you don't have significant long haul COVID symptoms, your hair should return. It's basically a time period where you're just losing more hair than you normally would due to the stress of the virus and the stress on your body. Okay, now let's talk about the result in the long COVID symptoms when it comes to the Delta variant. Are we also seeing that with Omicron or are you seeing these people also have long COVID issues? Anecdotally, we've definitely started seeing people who have Omicron who are having those long COVID symptoms. So things like a brain fog, not being able to remember what you're doing, some neurologic symptoms with numbness and tingling in your fingers, feeling like they're walking through water. So a lot of people who are developing COVID right now, we are hearing symptoms that are similar to long COVID symptoms. I think we'll have more data as Omicron is with us longer to see how many people are really impacted by long COVID. But we are definitely hearing reports of people with any any type of variant right now developing long COVID symptoms. Okay, now some doctors are saying the first sign of Omicron could be in your eyes, warning about another symptom, and that's pain in the eyes or pink eye. Tell us what you know about that. Well, we know that COVID affects the mucous membranes. And remember, we've been telling people even before and in the hospitals, we're all wearing face shields to protect our eyes and protect transmission through the eyes. Just like pink eye or other viral conjunctivitis or other viral illnesses, you can develop an infection in the eye that can become serious. So if you do develop a red eye, a pink eye, painful, itchy eye, I would recommend calling your doctor or being evaluated or testing for COVID because it could become more complicated. It could become more serious. And you could end up with vision loss if it becomes more serious. So don't ignore a symptom like a red, itchy, pink eye. Okay, so what is this COVID eye that is being found in some children? One mother complaining saying her child's eye was so swollen it looked like it was about to explode. So you can develop COVID viral eye where you have that red itchy eye. And then if you have inflammation or infection for a long period of time, you can also develop like a secondary infection around the eye that sometimes can require IV antibiotics. There's some pictures online. I believe it was a woman in the UK whose mm -hmm. son developed this COVID eye where she described it looked like it was gonna explode and it's very inflamed and the eye looks very big. So those are all things that we don't see as commonly, but they can occur with COVID. So again, don't ignore these symptoms because your symptoms can get significantly worse and you could have a very swollen eye or an orbital cellulitis that could eventually impact your vision. Okay, so let's talk about this recent study. I think it came out in December uh, from University of Florida Health that found that men with COVID-19 are more than three times more likely to be diagnosed with impotence or erectile dysfunction. What do we know about that? It's so interesting that you bring that up, Sylvia, because when the vaccines first came out, one of the myths that was circulating was that the vaccine caused in, uh, infertility. And we actually told people back then when the vaccines first came out that COVID itself can actually cause erectile dysfunction. Now we're continuing to see that with this recent study that you mentioned from University of Florida, where it's three times more likely if you're a man who develops COVID that you may develop impotence or erectile dysfunction because COVID-19 can impact the blood vessels in the penis. COVID-19 can also impact the amount of testosterone you're producing. So there's a lot of different reasons why COVID could mm -hmm. potentially produce impotence or erectile dysfunction. So that's yet another reason we're encouraging everyone, especially men, to get mm -hmm. themselves vaccinated. So real quickly then, is that also a temporary thing like the hair loss and some of the other stuff? 
So we've seen some reports where it is temporary, but there's some earlier reports from earlier in the pandemic that says it may be permanent if it impacts the blood vessels. So again, in most cases, it should be reversible, but if it has major damage to the blood vessels involved, it may be more long lasting. So again, even more important for you to avoid getting COVID and get yourself vaccinated. Okay, Dr. Shikajane with all the answers, we appreciate your time. Good to see you, see you soon. See you soon, Sylvia.